Commutation readings are made possible thanks to viewers like you. Please visit us at commutationconstruct.locals.com. Memberships are free to start with coupon code CCFREE. Hello and welcome back to Commutation Readings. My name is James Derry and I am your host. And today we are going through the seventh uh, Anti-Federalist paper. If it'll look, there we go. Sorry, wrong setting. For some reason, it only loads the browser in one of uh, the different settings I have. But yeah, here we are. Anti-Federalist number, se number seven. Adoption of the Constitution will lead to civil war. Well, that is... This sounds like it's going to be a very funny one to go into as the last... Uh, as the Federalist paper number seven was talking about how we would have civil war without adopting a Constitution. We did adopt it. This is saying that adopting it will lead to, to civil war, and we all know that we did end up having a civil war, so let's just jump on into it. F villain... <laughs> of course, it's starting with the word that I'm having trouble with. All right. Philanthropo Philanthropos, an anonymous uh, Virginian anti-federalist, appeared in the Virgin... Wait a second. Uh... Okay. There we go. That was a little weird. Uh, for some reason, it was, even though it said it was on the Federalist page, um, the anti federal wait, this is Federalist number seven. How odd. Let me see where this properly actually starts. Sorry. All right, I guess uh, it just, I guess they just added this little disclaimer at the beginning. Um, this is a bit of a, sorry, this website has a very inconsistent uh, formula, but um, honestly, so do all the digital books I found on the Federalist paper. That's why I'm, I've been using this website. Uh, at least it's, it should be easy enough for you guys to read uh, between the font size and everything. So I apologize for the delay. Let's just get into this. The time in which the constitution or government of a nation undergoes any particular change, it is always interesting and critical. The enemies are vigilant, allies are in suspense, friends hesitating between hope and fear, and all men are in eager expectation to see what such a change may produce. But the state of our affairs at present is of such moment as even to arouse the dead. A certain defender of the constitution has stated that objections to it are more calculated to alarm the fears of the people than to answer any valuable end. Was that the case, as it is not, will any, ma will any man in his sober sense say that the least infringement or appearance of infringement on our liberty, that liberty which has lately cost so much blood and treasure, together with anxious stays and sleepless nights, ought not both to rouse our fears and awaken our jealousies? The new constitution, in its present form, is calculated to produce despotism, thraldom, and confusion, and if the United States do swallow it, they will find it a bolus that will create convulsions to their utmost extremities. And, and this is interesting. So, already he's, he's talking about just how like we need to have a very uh, strict conversation about this. If you've read my speech from Patrick Henry... Uh, his uh, his give me liberty or give me death speech, he says in that speech um, that he says in that speech that the magnitude of the conversation should be equal to or the freedom and man and depth of the conversation should be equal to the magnitude of uh, of the conversation at hand. This is such a serious conversation. It's it's shows bad faith that the. Um, that the Federalists would not want the Anti-Federalists to be open in this discussion. They, they hate that it's one side coming off as one-sided, essentially. Uh, so, let's continue. Uh, and also notice, the United States 
uh, do swallow it. it. It's written with the United States, and it says they. So the United States are multiple. So this this is also an interesting thing about uh, back during this time when the states were truly fully sovereign. The United States was not seen as a single entity. It was seen as a collective of, of sovereign individual states, uh, more so than it is today, though we do still have some um, aspects of that get thanks to our 10th Amendment, though really uh, now the, Uni- the United States is, it's not the United States are, um, which you might remember from the movie National Treasure. But yeah, let's continue. Were they mine enemies, the worst imprecation I could devise would be, may they adopt it. For tyranny, where it has been chained, as for a few, as for a few years past, is always more cursed and sticks its teeth in deeper than before. Were Colonel, were Colonel George Mason's objections obviated, the improvement would be very considerable, though even then not so complete as might be. The Congress's having power without control, control to borrow money on the credit of the United States, their having power to appoint their own salaries, and their being paid out of the Treasury of the United States, thereby in some measure rendering them independent of the individual states, their being judges of the qualifications and election of their own members, by which means they can get men to suit any purpose, together with Colonel Mason's wise and judicious objections, are grievances, the very idea of which is enough to make even honest citizens exclaim in the language of Cato, O liberty, O my country. And, okay, so that is a big call. So he's already pointing out that, all right, so we've now made it so that Congress, um, because of the way the the Constitution was initially set up, it was the representatives in Congress who, in uh, the House of Representatives, who chose the Senate. So Congress had the power to elect officials um, without the say of the people. And you can see that now, too, that that has just evolved into, well, we now vote for the Senate, too, um, more directly. Uh, the the House and Senate and Congress in general, as well as the, the um, presidency, have the power to elect all these cabinet positions and all of these bureaucracies that are completely unelected positions. The U.S. government is now almost uh, the super majority of it is unelected uh, officers and positions um, that the people had no say in them getting to where they are. Um, it, it, though it, the argument is that we are technically doing it through our representatives, but really, it, it, not really. And I mean, w- with how bloated it is, not really working out uh, super well in that way, I would say, though it is technically Republican in that form. Um, Though, here's the good part, uh, the part that I pay attention to. So, they have the power to borrow money uh, on the credit of the U.S. They have the power to appoint their own salaries. They they, uh, have the power to decide how the Treasury pays out. All this stuff, like all this stuff involving money, they have complete control over uh, through the Congress and that's like that should literally make everyone just turn their heads and be like so these guys get to decide their own salary decide when they get their own raises they get to decide uh how the money is spent how the money is they decide everything with the with the money and taxation of the nation so the income and the outcome and the expense all is all handpicked by congress isn't that a little bit you know um isn't there a little bit of uh, trouble in that? Isn't there a little bit of maybe eyebrow raising um, questions of, hmm, well, can't they just continually give themselves raises? Can't they just continually uh, support themselves well beyond the means of the average citizen? Um, I mean, in, in my personal take, if I were to design, design a constitution, I would make it so that the uh, that elected officials could not have a salary above that of the average of uh, their local of um, the local area that they represent. So, for an individual in, in an area that they represent, uh, not the householding average, but 
the individual average, which is a lot lower. Um, so I feel like uh, that would be a very big deterrent to people going into abused government um, to try to like make it their career because there is a hard limit on what you could earn directly through government, uh, where now they're able to kind of vote themselves more wealth um, and lifetimes worth of pensions. Anyhow, continuing on, our present constitution, with a few additional powers to Congress, seems better calculated to preserve the rights and defend the liberties of our citizens than the one proposed without proper amendments. So again, he's saying, if we want to defend liberties, uh, we should just amend the Articles of Confederation rather than adopt a new constitution. All right. Let us therefore for once show our judgment and solidarity by continuing it and prove the opinion to be erroneous that levity and fickleness are not only the foibles of our tempers, but the reigning principles in these states. They are men amongst us of such dissatis dissatisfied tempers that place them in heaven. They would find something to blame and so restless and and self-sufficient that they must be eternally reforming the state. But the misfortune is, hold on, let me move this. Uh, they always leave, they always leave affairs worse than they find them. A change of government is at all times dangerous, but at present may be fatal without the utmost caution, just after emerging out of a tedious and expensive war, feeble in our nature and complicated in our form, we are little able to bear the rough we are little able to bear the rough posting of civil dissensions which are li which are likely to ensure and sue even now discontent and discontent and opposition distract ah oh, that's worded awkwardly discontent and opposition distract our councils division and desp despondency affect our people is it then a time to alter our government, that government w with even now totters on its foundations and will, without tender care, produce ruin by its fall? Beware, my countrymen, our enemies, uncontrolled as they are in their ambi ambitious schemes, fretted, fretted with losses and perplexed and disappointed will exert their whole power and policy to increase and continue our confusion. And while they are and while we are destroying one another, they will be repairing their losses and ruining our trade. Okay, so that actually uh, fits very well under the... So, I think this, this whole section, speaks very well to our modern uh, setting with, the landscape, with our modern political landscape. Uh, as just, if, if we look at how the um if we look at how the political class responded to uh, trump and how he came in and really and he really basically tore apart at the at their kind of elite like foundational stranglehold uh like it was all animosity uh both from many on who the people who are supposed to be on Trump's side on the right, uh, you can see it in people like McConnell who would just uh, like use Trump and then throw him out. Um, and it was obviously everywhere on the left in the U.S. So you you can see that there is that uh, while they're trying to argue about policy and then look at the whole COVID situation. Everyone's freaking out. Everyone's worried. Everyone's angry at each other. You have people in the Northeast uh, who all think Florida is some crazy chaotic land of people not wearing masks and uh, and uh, spreading COVID recklessly. Whereas uh, here, people are just like using common sense. I'm in Florida, I should mention. Uh, and we're kind of just doing what we believe is best for us individually. And uh, when we go out uh, into the public... Uh, we do what kind of suits the people, but then we look at New York and we, and all these other places. We look at California and we see the governors being very des despotic in their levels of control and their how they're really just crushing uh, businesses and individuals and um, and freedoms uh, throughout the state, and, and that freaks us out. So it, it ends up creating a combative situation between 
both sides, uh, both the states, and even you can see it inside the states where people are sort of, uh, some are freaking out in, in Florida being like, why isn't the government telling us to do more? And some people are in New York being like, why is the government forcing us to do all this? Like, so there, there's a lot of sort of internal conflict. Um, and there's a lot of judgment between the people seeing each other, uh, people who see people not wearing masks, and they're just like, that person's such an evil idiot. And then you see people wearing a mask, and you're just like, you, like, you're 30 feet away from me. Why are you wearing a mask? And why are you, like, yelling at me that I need to be wearing a mask? We're literally nowhere near each other. Just shut the hell up. So that's kind of the... Um, uh, leading to a lot, of, a lot of battle between the people. You also have like the people battling about like CRT and all these other things. And then all the meanwhile, you have uh, Biden coming in on his first day, writing 50, signing 15 executive orders, um, really trying to reconcentrate power and controlling industries and all this other stuff uh, that uh, they're basically uh, trying to regain their establishment stranglehold that Trump kind of uh, fought against. And while most of Trump's executive orders went through the courts for ages and ages and ages, it doesn't look like any of these are going to be going through the court. So you, you, you can see that there's, uh, there's this establishment stranglehold right now trying to really do that and keep the people confused, keep the people tired and just not wanting to deal with politics, but also want to just be able to live their lives, but also like hating each other in all these different ways. There's a lot of uh, social conflict that is being aroused right now. Um, at least that's what I'm seeing. But yeah, I, I think this paragraph really hits home uh, for a way we are feeling right now. And now continuing on. Of all the plagues that infest a nation, a civil war is the worst. Famine is severe. Pestilence is dreadful. But in these, though men die, they die in peace. The father expires without the guilt of the son, and the son, if he survives, enjoys the inheritance of his father. Cities may be thinned, but they neither plundered nor burnt. But, but when a civil war is kindled... Yeah, kindled. There is then forth no security of property nor protection from any law. Life and fortune become precarious, and all that is dear to men is at the discretion of profligate, profligate sol soldiery. Soldiery? Yeah, soldiery. Dubious licentiousness li 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 on such occasions. Cities are exhausted by heavy contributions or sacked because they cannot answer exorbitant demands. And if you look back at the Civil War, um, Grant, Bur I'm pretty sure it was Grant, who burned down uh, Atlanta, Savannah, like it was basically invade, cut and burn everything, destroy it all uh, as, as they continued their pursuit. And uh, as they withdrew... They would destroy the, the north was would destroy a lot of the territory in the south and the cities and stuff. Uh, they would attack a lot of the they would attack a lot of the um, civilians during the war. Uh, and and this, I, I bring this up because it's something that a lot of people in the U.S. don't know because a lot of when people look at back at the Civil War, like the North was a union, and a lot of people like to see it as the purely the heroes who did all this good stuff like they fought the rebels and the contention and the evil people who want to like uh who want to break off and destroy the union it's just like okay but they literally destroyed the union in an attempt to keep it together like there was like they were literally destroying half the country uh to to keep the country together so uh you see that civil war really is just so destructive and it, it really there no one comes out of a civil war w without blood on their hands so even if we like to look back and on the union as being so benevolent it, it's worth noting all the it, it's worth noting there is just a lot there's a lot of politics and there's a lot of blood on the hands of both sides and and it is devastating Countries are eaten up by the parties they favor, and ravished by the one they oppose. Fathers and sons sheathe their swords in another 
in another's bowels in the field, and their wives and daughters are exposed to rudeness and lust of ruffians at home. Uh, uh, fathers and sons will kill each other, and wives and daughters will be raped. Uh, yes, yeah, that's that's essentially what they're saying, and uh, <laughs> that again, this did happen during the U.S. Civil War. All of this happened. Uh, this foreshadowing that's being done in the Anti-Federalist Papers right here is spot on. Um, and it's worrisome because we're in a, currently in a position where we, we may fall to, in that direction again, um, depending on how people respond to what's all going on now. Uh, I, I wouldn't say we're in it now. We're, I would say now is more equivalent to the 1850s than it would be to necessarily the 1860s. But so it's like, we could end up falling into closer towards the civil war. Or we could end up falling um, away from it. it. It depends on if, if one side really gives up essentially. And when the sword has decide has decided quarrel, the scene is closed with banishments, forfeitures, and barbarous executions that entail distress on children then unborn. May heaven avert the dreadful catastrophe. In the most limited governments, what wranglings, animosities, factions, partiality, and all other evils that tend to embroil a nation and weaken a state are con constantly practiced by legislatures. What then may we expect in a new constitution be adopted as it now stands? The great will struggle for power, honor, and wealth. The poor become a prey to avarice, insolence, and oppression. And while some are studying to supplant their neighbors and others striving to keep their stations, one villain will wink at the opposition of another. The people be fleeced and the public business neglected. From despotism and tyranny, good Lord, deliver us. The, what this is was a I found this to be a very powerful um, a, a very powerful letter it, it doesn't I don't believe it necessarily expresses how civil war will be uh, guaranteed but this is a warning against civil war and it really does do the it, it does a deed of of really showing just how the the political leaders are going to be struggling for power, honor, and wealth. Uh, and if you want to look at it in modern terms, you may replace honor with, um, with perception or with um, pre prestige, I guess. Uh, like, people want to be famous, essentially, um, would be the way I would put it these days. Uh, the poor become the poor becoming prey to avarice. Everyone's trying to feed off the poor. Look at uh, Amazon. Be they're trying to get in bed with uh, the Biden administration on day one. Uh, they teamed up with Biden to be the distributors of the COVID vaccine, which to be the federal distributor of it, possibly the sole federal distributor of it. Which what what, what does that mean? Uh, it means that the largest country in the U.S. and possibly in the, and I, I possibly in the globe uh, is now getting all of the income, all all of the government expense is for distributing the vaccines is now going to go straight into Amazon's pocket. They're making a they're going to make a killing off of this, and at the same time, Amazon is promoting a fifteen dollar minimum wage. They're lobbying. Uh, that all this becomes federalized, and essentially what they're doing is they're trying to destroy all their competition. They're they're making it so that they're trying to make it so that uh, small businesses and and the poor aren't going to have an option other than to basically work for Amazon. Am, am if if there ever was a mega corporation that controlled just a horrifying amount of the economy. It is Amazon. They control so, at least in the U.S., they control so much of the shipping. They have one that they are. I'm pretty sure their shipping is bigger than like UPS at this point. Um, like I'm pretty sure they they're one of the biggest shipping facilities in the world. 
they uh, definitely in the U.S. Um, by national standards, they have control of something like ninety percent of the cloud. Um, well, definitely well over eighty. Uh, they're controlling the cloud, which means their their Amazon Web Services control almost the entire internet. They they could shut off basically any website that they just feel like they don't want to do business with, or they can just find if it's a big, big enough uh, website, they can just find something that they say violates their terms of service and they can change their terms of service at any time and then just say, okay, we're cutting you off because this violates our, our terms of service, which we updated uh, five minutes ago. Uh, so that's like what they did with Parler, essentially. Uh, they found just 98 examples for for a website with millions of people posting, they found 98 examples of people saying bad things that, that were against their terms of service. And then, boom, whole website's gone. Um, despite Parler actually going and not just getting rid of all those posts, but also getting rid of like 100 more. So you, you can see that it, they have monopolistic control of, the, of almost the entire digital marketplace. Um, not just, and like, they also have control of the marketplaces on the marketplace. So if you think of the digital marketplace as the, uh, the ability to host a website and create your own business on the internet, they have control of that market. Uh, so you're essentially licensing, licensing off internet space from Amazon. Uh, and at the same time, you're licensing off, um, you're licensing off, you're selling on Amazon's website, essentially. Uh, so you're licensing off space on Amazon's website to also sell. So they're double dipping with you in a lot of, in a lot of these cases with a lot of these companies. Um, so it, it, it's both, it's both a hor horizontal monopoly in certain places while being a vertical monopoly as well. So it, it, Amazon is a horrifying company to me but you have this company that already has all this power now getting centralized m more and more centralized money from the government and they they now have an even better ear in our new president's or they have a new better uh voice in the ear of our new president uh to which they're going to be arguing for a 15 dollar minimum wage which is going to put all small businesses out of business essentially you, you can't hire employees um if you're paying them more, if you're being forced to pay them more money than you can afford to pay them. All this is going to do is speed up automation, honestly. But anyhow, uh, I'm going on a side, on a, I've gone on a massive side rant here for about the past five minutes. Uh, it, it, this is just like, but this is where I'm seeing this stuff kind of getting, coming in play. In the modern world, I, I, I like to try to relate what I read here and see, okay, where does it come up in a modern sense? And I see that in uh, the struggle for power, I see that a lot through uh, the politicians, the establishment politicians. You see the um, the prey on the, on the poor and the weak, um, and you see this in how people are being, um, are really being beginning to struggle uh, and how big businesses are just gaining more and more centralized control they're, they're gr these monopolies are growing and gaining more power or monopolies duopolies uh, e even if there's three companies like you're not in a free market space if you have only three companies competing with one another like a truly free market is probably going to have dozens if not hundreds of competitors all going up and down about each other um whereas th there's a lot of not that essentially uh there there's a lot of that conflict going on right now where the markets are being consolidated and our governments are helping to consolidate the markets um and you see the uh the neighbors trying to supplement each other and kind of like oppose each other just look at how maligned maga is in that entire movement look at how and look at how maga views the left now and even how um people who are going to be more balanced like me view the left 
um, or how people view Q. Like all the, there's, there are more players right now than uh, than I think anyone could really, in good faith, keep up with all of them. And there is a lot of animosity going in almost every direction. Uh, so that that's kind of where I see us right now. And I see a lot of that reflecting the words I'm reading here. And, and maybe it's a self-validation bias. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe I have that. I, I'm just trying to relate too much to this. Um, but that's kind of something I'm seeing. And that's kind of where I'm at with this. Um, but yeah, so there, there is this, I, I, I'm not necessarily seeing where the constitution necessarily guarantees us so much more than so much more than previous uh, than the previous articles of confederation uh, though they they do make I do like that they make the good argument that at least at the current state that the con- that this country was in back then um, and that the states were in back then was not a very secure place to be making such a large change to the federal government. Uh, and certainly not one that really could go without being questioned by anyone who really gives it much thought like, oh, we're kind of in a turbulent times. And while all of us are kind of turbulent, the whole our whole political leadership just changed how our entire government functions. That's kind of shady. Like that's kind of the attitude that it seems that they're take that they're presenting about. And I understand it, um, though. And luckily, it did not lead to an immediate civil war. But we can see that um, that over time, the gestation of all of the um, frustrations and angers and the tensions that built up after adopting the Constitution did end up leading to the Civil War um, in many ways. So, yeah. Anyhow, uh, I should probably get going on. I know this is late. I apologize. Uh, I had to record uh, this in the morning. So... Uh, hopefully you will get this by four o'clock. I will see you guys later. Bye.